Okay, we are at section uh, 7.2, work done by a constant force. Uh, let's share the uh, PowerPoint. And it starts off with a, a picture of three erasers and somebody pushing on it. So when a force is applied to an object and the object uh, moves, you, you have force times the distance is equal to work. And there's actually a little more complicated than that. It's force times uh, the distance times the cosine of the angle between them. So you can see in uh, A, there's you know, the fingers pushing on a uh, on an eraser. It will move, but the angle is pretty steep, so it's not going to move that much. The in B, the uh, angle is a little is a little uh, more to the horizontal. Uh, so the theta, it, the angle is less, so it's gonna, it's a little more efficient in moving the eraser. And you can see in C, if you're just push, pushing straight down on the eraser, that's very inefficient. It's not gonna move anywhere. Um, so that the uh, that the angle that the force is applied is very important in the uh, calculating the work. Um, so here, here's work. Uh, work is defined as the force applied times the distance traveled times the cosine of theta, uh, the angle theta between the uh, res the uh, displacement vector and the force vector. Uh, so it's uh, F delta R cosine theta. That is the definition of work. Um, so if there is no displacement, if you don't move, there is no work done. Uh, that that's a hard concept to uh, to think about sometimes because sometimes it feels like work, uh, but if you haven't moved, if you haven't uh, moved an object, no work has been done. Um, you know, you can imagine pushing a a heavy piano. You push and push and push, and you're you're real tired after you push. But if you if it hasn't gone anywhere, if you haven't ever dislodged it, uh, you've done no work. You feel like you've done work, but in the physics sense, you've uh, done no work. Uh, here's, uh, imagine a balloon. Um, now, if you were to push on either side of the balloon, the displacement of the center of the balloon, uh, that would be zero. So no work is done on the overall balloon, but you can talk about the displacement of the membrane of the balloon, that you're doing work uh, to stretch the balloon, that's the displacement that you need. But the overall displacement of the balloon, balloon it hasn't uh, uh, moved. Now, uh, let's look at uh, the chair. Let's say you take this chair and you hold it out at arm's length for uh, a few minutes. Afterwards, your arms are going to be tired. You feel like you've done work. But if you haven't moved the chair from that position, you've done no work. Um, so work is equal to the force times the uh, displacement uh, times the cosine of theta, uh, the angle between the force and the displacement. Okay, so F is the only force that does work on the block in this situation. We're, this is a, uh, we can consider it a frictionless surface. So you have, you have multiple forces if you, if you, um, draw a free body diagram you have the uh the downward force uh, uh mg the, the weight you have the normal force of the surface holding up the block and then you have the the pulling force of f uh so f since uh, n and mg uh, are they uh, uh they cancel each other out f is the only force that's doing work um, in this case, so work again is equal to force times delta R uh, times cosine theta. Work is equal to force times the displacement times the cosine of theta. Uh, for theta equals zero, in other words, if that if that force were in line with the dash line, uh, if the force were perfectly horizontal, uh, the cosine of theta, the cosine of zero is equal to one. So the work is equal to the force times uh, delta R times one. So it's just F delta R. Uh, so the unit of work is Newtons. A force is in Newtons. A displacement is in meters. So it's Newton meters, and it's equal to a joule. 
uh, that's uh, a Newton is kilogram meters per second squared. You remember force uh, is equal to mass times acceleration, kilograms times meters per second squared times meters, you end up with kilogram meter squared per second squared. That is joules. Um, that is the unit. Uh, I should keep up with my, uh, my notes here. Okay. Um, now work, uh, energy transfer. Work is an energy transfer. And you can think of it as, uh, uh, you, you know, if you have money in the bank. If you, you take money out of the bank, if you pay something with a check or something, it crosses a boundary from the, from the bank. Um, you know, when money is trans transferred across the boundary of your account, it's, it's inward for deposits and outward for withdrawals. Uh, that then you you you've transferred money across the boundary. It's the same with energy. Uh, if if work is done on the system uh, and W is positive, the energy is transferred to the system. If W is negative and work is negative, then energy is transferred uh, from the system. Um, so there's a transfer of energy. Um, and I think let's oh there let's do the quick quiz. Um, okay, the gravitational force exerted by the sun on the Earth holds the Earth in an orbit around the sun. Let us assume that the orbit is perfectly circular. We'll learn later that it's it's uh, elliptical, but it's practically uh, circular. So let's assume that the orbit is perfectly circle circular. The work done by this gravitational force during a short time interval in which the earth moves through a displacement in its orbital path is zero, positive, negative, or impossible to determine. Um, so the gravitational force is the centripetal force that keeps the earth uh, orbiting around the sun. So the force, if it's perfectly uh, circular, the displacement and those the distance from the the earth to the sun never changes so that's zero so the answer would be zero um the uh the force does not work on the earth because the force is pointed toward the center of the circle and is therefore per perpendicular to the direction of its displacement um, the displacement is lateral i mean it's you know uh, in a circle and the force is perpendicular to it so the the cosine theta between the displacement and the force is equal to zero. So zero work is done uh, by the uh, um, by the uh, um, the gravitational pull of the sun on the Earth. Okay, in the figure, the figure shows four situations in which a force is applied to an object. In all four cases, the force has the same magnitude, and the displacement of the object is to the right and of the same magnitude. Rank the situations in order of the work done by the force on the object, from most positive to most negative. Okay, the most positive, well, you've got um, the force, it, when the force is in line with the, um, when the force is in line with the displacement, that's the maximum. That's the cosine of theta is equal to zero. So all of these, it's force, it's force times delta r uh, times the cosine of theta. So really, it's the cosine of theta that we're measuring uh, to rank them. So in C, the uh, theta is equal to zero. So the cosine of theta is equal to um uh, is equal to one, so that's the maximum. You've got a full F times delta R. Now, uh, let's look. The next one would be A, uh, and it's zero. It's zero uh, because the cosine of 90 is equal to zero. And uh, so the, the answer is zero. Now, let's look at B and D. Well, uh, which one is greater? Well, D is actually greater than than uh, B because because the force is greater than uh, greater than ninety degrees. It's going to be slightly negative. 
it's going to be slightly negative. So it's uh, uh, D would be next. And then B, since it's 180 degrees, the cosine of 180 degrees is full negative. It's minus 1. So it ends up being greater than, uh, than D. So the ranking is C, A, D, B. That is the ranking for the, this, uh, uh, this, let's see if I'm right, C, A, D, B. Uh, correct. All right, and I think that's the end of section 7.2. We'll go on with 7.3 in the next uh, little segment.